this project I started with this real pretty pink metallic vase that I had picked up I think from Goodwill and what I'm going to do is nip it all the way around the perimeter and we're making another Christmas tree. Sorry if you're tired of the Christmas trees <laughs> but this is what the shape I'm trying to get kind of like that and um, I'm actually wanting more of the flatter ones um, so I just go around the perimeter and nip, nip, nip. And this glass is fairly thin. And as you go down further, it gets thinner and thinner. And it's very sharp. So as the glass gets thinner, my nippers are not um, close enough together to nip the glass. So I get my other pair, which do come closer together, and how we got them to go closer together was by removing the spring there and grinding down the knob. And then they're allowed to come closer together, it allows them to come closer together and to be able to nip the thinner glass. And I'm also pointing out the marks that I have on there. You need to rotate the um, wheels every so often uh, because the area that you that, that you keep on using will get dull and if you rotate them and mark where you've had them you'll know what areas you've already used. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so here I am with the nippers that are closer together because like I said this glass starts getting thinner and thinner and this glass is so pointy and sharp. I have I actually um, punctured my finger several times because it was so sharp and um, so I just go ahead and I continue to nip around the perimeter of the glass until it's gone. And I know we've talked about painted glass and not being able to tumble it because the paint will come off but I decided I am going to try to do it for about a half an hour because um, recently on Facebook we've been talking about tumbling pottery which is also painted and we do it for a very short time and it doesn't take all the paint off. So I thought I would go ahead and give this a try and just throw it all into the tumbler and tumble it for about a half hour. And there's the glass and then I put water over the top. You just want to cover it so that the water's over the top and then I put it on the tumbler for exactly one half hour. Then I dump it into the colander and rinse it off and you can see that some of the paint has come off. It kind of gives the faux mercury glass look and it is not sharp. The edges and some of it the paint has totally come off within the half an hour but there's quite a few that um, are still okay and they are not sharp at all anymore. If um, the edges are still a tiny bit pointy. You can use the, a little sander, uh, sanding block or a piece of sandpaper, but they are pointy, but they're not sharp where they're going to puncture your skin. And I go ahead and I lay them out and I dry them out. And here you can see how um, you can kind of see through parts of it, but I think that kind of looks pretty like that. What do you guys think? So next, after it's all dry, I start laying it out on a canvas. The canvas is a 4x12 canvas that I picked up at Michael's. And you can see as I'm putting it on, you can see the kind of faux mercury glass effect on it, which wasn't really what I was going for, but <clears throat> unfortunately that's what happened. And it kind of looks cool like that. But once I get it all piled on, because I have so much on, you don't even see through it anymore. So I just go by using the larger pieces at the bottom, uh, going up further apart, and as you go up closer and closer together, and then fill in in the center. And I just keep on piling the glass on until I'm satisfied with the way it looks. Next, I take this rhinestone chain, and this is a large rhinestone chain. It is like a 8 to 10 millimeter rhinestone chain that I actually picked up on Timu. They were out of them, but they have them back in now, and I will link them under the description. It's a fairly long link, but um, I think they're really nice. You can use the smaller rhinestone chains. I just happen to think these are real pretty. And I just went ahead and cut them to length, and draped them across the pink Christmas tree. 
Next, I have a brooch that I want to put at, top, at the top. And when you're using a brooch, it has a pin on the back that has to be removed. And you have to be kind of careful when you take it off because you can damage the brooch when doing it. So um, just kind of carefully twist back and forth, back and forth until you get the pin part off. And then again for the um, other part. And then it will lay flat on your project. Next, it's ready for the resin. The resin I'm using for this project is KS resin. It's a coating or doming resin. And be sure to pick one that's a coating or doming resin because other resins can cause fish eyes and it can cause uh, the resin to pull away at the sides. So um, after it's all set up, I mix the resin together. The resin is a one-to-one -one ratio resin that you mix slowly in a cup for three minutes, approximately three minutes, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom to ensure thorough mixing, and you do it very slowly to help prevent bubbles. So you can see I just placed it up on top of plastic cups because if you leave it down on the protective cover, it will stick to it when it dries. I drizzle it over the glass first and then up onto the canvas. And when I'm doing this kind of glass, I like all of the glass to be totally covered. The only glass that I just drizzle it and kind of hit and miss is the, um, is the fire glass because if you totally saturate fire glass, it'll take away the sparkly qualities of the glass. Whereas this glass, I like it to be totally covered. And yes, you probably use more resin than you have to, but that's the way I like it. You guys can do it whatever way you choose. And I also like my resin to go along the sides. Some people don't want their resin on the sides. I go ahead and I go around the whole perimeter and uh, smooth it into the sides. And then I have these pretty sparkly silver um, beads that I had also picked up on Timu. And I put those all over the Christmas tree. Next, I use the kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles, and then I'm pretty much done. I do come back about every 15 minutes after I'm done with the project, check for sediment, check for placement, retorch if I need for the bubbles, and um, I did not put tape on the back of this, so the resin is probably leaving some drips underneath. And what I'm doing is taking the toothpick and going all the way around and kind of um, catching those drips so it doesn't leave drips under it. And I do that every time I come back to check on the project. And I do have it on my Let's Resin res, uh, leveling table, which I absolutely love. So now everything's level. I don't have to pick it up and put it on the floor anymore. And I will leave a link for that under the description swapping the star out at the end. I had purposely bought this garland at Hobby Lobby. All their Christmas stuff is half off. I specifically bought it just for the stars to be able to use on the top of Christmas trees. They are perfect. I put some glue on it, sprinkled some glitter on it, and put it on top of the tree. And I really like this a lot better than the one that was on there. Hey everyone. I love my pink tree. I hope you guys like it. Uh, 2023, I guess, was the year of the Barbie and the Barbie pink. So I thought I would try a pink Christmas tree. And um, I've been talking a lot about tumbling and um, re more recently about tumbling it just for an hour to two hours with just water to get the sharp edges off so that we don't cut ourselves on our artwork. And so I thought, well, why not give it a try with the painted glass? Because I always say you can't tumble painted glass because the paint will come off. But, um, you know, we tumble. We were talking on the Facebook group about tumbling pottery and how that's painted. And I thought, well, geez, why don't we try it just for a half hour? And that's what I did. And some of the paint did come off. It almost gave it like that faux mercury glass look. And I have this piled on top of each other. So I'm not sure if you can see it as well, but I did show you back in the beginning of the video how there was some uh, little 
spotted areas and I thought that looked kind of neat. So anyway, it worked and it is, I mean, these edges were razor sharp. I punctured myself several times with it and normally I don't do that, but I think it was because this glass is so thin. And after a half an hour like this, um, these edges were razor sharp too. You would slice yourself and they're not anymore. And if you don't feel like the points are dull enough, you can always do a little bit of a um, sandpaper, sandpaper or sandpaper block and do the edges a little bit more if you want. But anyway, I think it turned out cute. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, it, and that really helps the channel. And if you enjoy the channel, go ahead and subscribe. I was talking about the Facebook group. It's doing really well. Um, a lot of newbies there, great place to ask questions. A lot of people that have been doing this for years. I'm learning a lot myself. And um, I hope you come join us there. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.